The software engineering market is brutal out there, but in this video, I'm going to show you what you should be learning instead of grinding lead code. Let's jump in. I'm going to go through a report from Cube Careers about the state of Kubernetes jobs in the fourth quarter of 2024. And as you can see here, the most popular job title in the Kubernetes market is software engineer, which might be very surprising because you might think that it's just for infrastructure, DevOps, and platform engineers. But no, there is a different trend happening. And this is why you should be learning Kubernetes today. Every quarter, this company, Cube Careers, reports this, um, pu publishes this report where they go through uh, 25,000 jobs and then filter them and create graphs and statistics out of them. So the first part of the report is the salary. So this is the worldwide salary converted to US dollars. And here we see that the average worldwide salary is $154,000. So this is not very clear because it takes the worldwide currencies and and uh, converts them to USD, so that's not very accurate. So uh, we will get into the American salaries uh, right after this. So the most of the Kubernetes jobs are located in North America and with Europe in second place. And I myself live in Europe, in the Netherlands, and here there are plenty of Kubernetes jobs. Interestingly, when you check out the statistics for this, the graphs for this, you see that the number of Kubernetes jobs in North America is rising. Now, I haven't checked the statistics, but I don't think the amount of software engineering jobs is rising, but Kubernetes jobs are. So this is why I'm advising you to learn Kubernetes, even if you are a software engineer. So let's check out the salary ranges for North America. In the fourth quarter, the average minimum salary is 139k and the maximum salary is 200k. And interestingly, these are 3.3% lower than the average of the entire year. So the sal the average salary had minimum salary has decreased in the fourth quarter. Also the maximum salary has decreased by 1.3%, which is interesting, but it's a sign of the market, I suppose. Now let's check out the average salary in Europe. The range here is 66,000 euros, the minimum to 87,000 euros. Now this is, you have to keep in mind that Europeans are compensated very differently than Americans because in general we have social services like government services, healthcare, etc. So our, our salaries are lower, but our quality of life may be even higher, even though we get paid less. Now, the highest recorded salary in Europe was up to 233,000 euros, which is very impressive, which is a head of engineering role published in the third quarter of 2024. So here you see that these even in like management and lead roles, Kubernetes is now playing a huge role. And as uh, from, I can speak for myself that when I was working as a consultant, I was being paid about uh, 70,000 euros a year. And I had a company car and some other benefits. So I think this is in line with what I have uh, experienced myself. But now I make much more money by working much less by because I work as a freelancer. And that's a topic for a different video. But if you want to know more about that, um, I will let you know how to get in touch with me soon. So the Kubernetes job market seeks software engineers, DevOps, and platform engineers. Now, this is super interesting to me. I was really surprised to see that software engineers have the, the software engineering jobs have such a huge um, portion of these jobs. And I'm surprised by this because I, I also always associate Kubernetes with the infrastructure side because I come from the ops side, right? DevOps, I'm a DevOps engineer. But what you see now is that the trend in enterprise companies and even startups too, is that software engineers are being pushed more and more towards the infrastructure side of things, probably also because AI is taking over a lot of their work. 
the actual like brunt work of writing the code that can almost always be outsourced to to AI these days. You need the engineers to prompt the AI, but the actual sitting and writing, the time consuming stuff can be outsourced. And now companies are now pushing these infrastructure tasks towards software engineers. I think that is what is happening here. Now, this is of course a bit bad news for us DevOps platform engineers, as we'll see later too, but you can really, really stand out from the crowd. If you are a good software engineer and you have Kubernetes skills, you're going to be a highly requested and, and you will have a, a, a skill set that is very useful in today's market. So Kubernetes might sound like super um, overwhelming and so much to learn, but it's not that difficult. Kubernetes is actually quite easy to learn. It's just an API that you talk to. It's a very big API, but software engineers, like I'm not a software engineer, but you guys have been studying mathematics and algorithms. You can handle these YAML files. But if you want to learn how to write these YAML files, <laughs> if you want to learn Kubernetes in the proper way, then I highly recommend you check out my Kubernetes fundamentals course, which is available in at school.com slash kubecraft. This is my DevOps Kubernetes community. This is an eight hour course that will set you up with a full introduction to Kubernetes um, and which prepares you for the CKAD and CKA exams, but it does it in a practical way. It's not just a lame um, theoretical PowerPoint. No, we like from the first module, we sit there and write code together. And after that, you can uh, continue with the home lab course. And there's just so much more here and you can ask questions and get uh, technical support by joining one of the Q&A calls that I host every week. So check it out. I think you might like it. I've been getting thousands of good reviews on my courses, so check it out. So as I said, interestingly, DevOps platform and DevSecOps and positions were only, they, they only make up about 9 to 6 and 4%, so that is 19%, whereas the software engineers make up 42%. So yeah, DevOps engineers and software engineers are going to be competing for the same kind of work, apparently. And um, this is also true for the combined for all quarters. And what's interesting when you check out the trend, the trends here is that the job titles without software engineering title are actually decreasing here. So DevOps engineer went from well, what is it, approximately 13% to 9%. Platform engineer went from 13 to maybe 6%. So all of these titles are decreasing, and that is worrying me quite a bit, uh, seeing that these... But it, it does um, agree with the trend I just spotted where software engineers are taking over more of the platform DevOps side of things, or at least they are asked to by management, and whether they do it, that remains to be seen. I know plenty of developers who only want to write software and don't want to be bothering with uh, with operations and with infrastructure, so uh, understandably. So interestingly, these jobs are decreasing, but it's the fourth quarter, budgets are lower. We also see it here um, in 2023 between Q3 and Q4, there was a sharp decrease in DevOps engineering roles. So yeah, I don't, I don't attach too much value to this. But what's interesting is that machine learning engineer is rising and you're, we're going to be seeing a steady rise here. Kubernetes jobs allow remote work of some sort, but what is interesting here is that 50% of the remote jobs require the selected candidate to work remotely within a specified geography and 40% allow for hybrid work. So it's, what is it? Well, not about 90, 93%, 99%, yeah, 99% of the jobs either require you to work hybrid or work in the same geography. So the point I'm making here is if you are outside of the U.S. and you're trying to get a remote job in the U.S., it's basically no chance. There is basically no, no way you're going to get that. You need to be really special in order to get that. 
So I have a few Indian friends. They spend hours a day applying to remote jobs uh, in the U.S. They have no luck, and then they complain that they are sp wasting their time when then I tell them, yeah, you are wasting your time because there's no chance that you're going to get one of these jobs. It's just too much competition. Sorry, but that's the, that's the truth. You have to increase your own chances. On call, there's still a very small uh, portion of Kubernetes jobs. I've never been on call for uh, Kubernetes jobs myself, fortunately. And let's check out the popular technologies for Kubernetes jobs. Now, one big flaw in this, um, this survey uh, is that they don't address GitOps, which is very strange to me. I don't understand why they don't have Argo CD and Flux CD in here. That being said, Docker is, of course, still very um, much represented because usually containers are um, run in Docker locally, and then you would bring them to production on Kubernetes, which is the container orchestrator. Postgres and Kafka, they are still pretty high up. And Helm, interestingly, Helm is uh, less than Postgres, but it also shows a bit like these jobs, job descriptions are created by like managers who are not that technical, right? So they don't list all of the technologies. Point being, Postgres is actually really, po really popular, so focus on Postgres, which is what I do. So let's check out the programming languages that are popular for Kubernetes jobs. Number one is Python. And as I also advise all of my students, learn Python. It's used everywhere, especially here in Europe. There are very few Go jobs here, but there's tons of Python work. And I, I have a feeling that Go is more popular in the US. But as you see here, Python is requested almost for every job. And it's because it's so useful. And also with uh, when thinking about AI and the future of that, Python is basically the language of AI. So you will do very well learning Python. And very interesting that they also have JavaScript here. But that, of course, is um, to be expected when they have software engineering as the most popular title. So learn Python, maybe go, and uh, you're good to go. Whenever a programming language was mentioned, there was a 56% chance that Python was included. So there you have it. And this also shows in the graphs that Python is steadily rising. And interestingly, Shell has had a sharp decrease. But I wonder if they write Shell or Bash. But the, um, the languages C++ and TypeScript are basically stabilizing. So... Yeah, in terms of the Kubernetes world, maybe those aren't the best ones to focus on if you're learning a new language. What CICD tools are popular in Kubernetes jobs? Let's check this out. So interestingly, Jenkins is on the top here, followed by GitLab, followed by GitHub Actions. So I always advise not learning Jenkins for the sake of learning Jenkins, really investigate if the company that you're working or want to work for uses Jenkins because I have only seen it in my first job and all of the jobs I've had after that, I haven't seen Jenkins at all. We are, uh, we've been mo I've been mostly working in Azure environments and then there we have been using Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions mostly. So even though it's the most popular tool here, really investigate your local market and see if you actually need to learn it. Because I don't think, I'm not sure how, how much longer Jenkins is going to be around, honestly. CICD tools in the graphs. Well, Jenkins has had a rise here, as you see, and GitLab is decreasing. But interestingly, GitHub Actions is increasing. And... I have heard some rumors that GitHub Actions is going to be the new Azure DevOps. Now that Microsoft has taken over Git, GitHub, then they're not putting as much Azure um, development into Azure DevOps anymore. It's uh, GitHub that they're focusing most on. So I, I personally also just use GitHub Actions and it works so well. So you never can never go wrong in learning GitHub and GitHub Actions. Observability. Of course, this gold standard of Grafana and Prometheus remains. 
if you want to get a Kubernetes job, you have to get experience with these types of tools. And in my home lab course, I will show you exactly how to set that up uh, on your own Kubernetes home lab with GitOps. And um, you can pra start practicing and learning Grafana um, in, in the comfort of your own home. In summary, um, this report is very clear on that software engineering jobs are the most popular job title for Kubernetes jobs. So if you're a software engineer and you're struggling to find work, really pay attention to this and maybe start learning Kubernetes today. And the best place to learn that is KubeCraft, my private DevOps community. We have 500 members here that you can network with. They're from all over the world. They know about all the jobs in all of the regions. We have senior and junior engineers here. So um, take a look. I think you might like it. It's the best place to, to learn Kubernetes for sure, hands down on the internet. Thank you so much, guys. See you in the next one.